Good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful uh, summit. Um, my name is uh, Mohammed Saleh. And yeah, that's my PSA approved picture. So, <laughs> so I'm a specialist solution architect uh, based out of uh, Dubai, um, but covering the EMEA region. Uh, you can reach me on uh, my Telegram or my uh, company email address. Um, I would be happy to address uh, the questions that you have. Um, any, any help uh, that you need, you can always um, um, ping me. So I'm actually uh, going to talk about um, how to do um, RTKVM and uh, DPDK on, uh, on OpenStack using Triple O. Or let's say, um, in our case, it is actually Red Hat OpenStack uh, uh, director uh, based installation. Uh, before that, you might be wondering what is OVS DPDK and what is uh, RTKVM and stuff like that, right? So the, there were a couple of sessions that had happened uh, before. So this is kind of a, uh, a follow up session, uh, a beginner session, actually. It is, it is kind of a beginner session. Um, but yeah, it is. It is a follow-up session for these, uh, these two, uh, actually three sessions uh, that had happened uh, yesterday and today. Um, they, they were actually done by a couple of engineers from, uh, I mean, uh, solution architects and uh, engineers from both Nokia and uh, um, uh, Red Hat. So this is actually, these are, these are the two, uh, uh, two sessions that were happened uh, for the OVS DPDK. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, more about uh, OVS DPDK, how does it work? How you can uh, configure it? What are the troubleshooting methods that you can use? Please go to these links. They, they are not they are not uh, uh, you know phony sites or something. It's it's the, I, I I genuinely put it there <laughs> just to make it easier for you guys. It doesn't take you to porn site. So please feel free to take it. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, that's the real-time KVM. How do you, uh, how it works, real-time real KVM, how does it work? So this, uh, this was done by Tapio, and uh, uh, he's our Nokia friend. And uh, Eric, it's a wonderful session. You would you'd love it. Um, a lot of information that you can get. So please uh, feel free to check it. Check it. Um, so, uh, getting into our uh, agenda, actually. So, it's about setting up RTKVM and DPDK using Red Hat OpenStack uh, platform. Uh, but uh, you can actually adopt it for any other platform as uh, as you require. I'm actually trying to. Uh, based on uh, Red Hat OpenStack, but yeah, feel free. You can actually uh, take the ideas, uh, build your own um, stuff based on whatever OpenStack deployer that you have. <clears throat> so this, this is the minimum requirement that we had uh, while doing the testing uh, setup. So there, there was one compute node, one controller node, one director node. Director, it's under cloud. I don't want to call them under cloud. It's a confusing thing. So I'll call them director. And then um, there was a Lua traffic gen. It is basically uh, a moon gen, um, moon gen node uh, with a Lua scripting language on top of it. It is very easy to do, do stuff. But I'm not going to cover the Lua part. You can actually um, refer to uh, Tapio's presentation today. So. It covers pretty much how to uh, how we, how things are done uh, while doing the testing. So <clears throat> the important stuff you are going to deploy RT, and there is going to be D DPDK along with it. The thing is, both of them require a particular configuration which complements each other. So you have to know your compute. You have to know your compute from down. I mean, you have to open up the compute node, whatever the compute node that you're going to deploy it on, you have to open it up. You, 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 should, you should be knowing what is, what is in there. 
uh, before getting in uh, get, getting into configuring configuring the uh, templates and things like that. So first of all, um, this one actually covers the BIOS part. So you have to disable the power management. You have to disable the hyperthreading. You don't want any uh, surprises because hyperthreading uses uh, uh, threads, which could be when you try to configure, when you try to pin uh, hyperthreading plays a lot of uh, issues. So disable it. You don't want it. You have uh, legacy USB support. Um, majority, you don't, you don't want those things in there. You just disable this. If possible, disable system management interrupts. Some hardware vendors give you access to those. So if, if you have access to those, disable it. Otherwise, yeah, it's up to you. <laughs> if, you if you can do it, uh, that's good. Now, you have to know more about the compute node. Again, we are doing RT stuff. You are, you are going to do a lot of CPU pinning. You, have, you, you need to know um, uh, how, the, how the compute is, compute server is actually configured. So you, 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 should, have, you should be having some latest processors. Uh, does it support NUMA? How many cores does it, does it have? How many CPUs does it have? Um, how, many, how much RAM does it have? How much uh, uh, RAM you, you have installed on it? Um, how many memory slots you have filled in? It actually helps you figure out uh, the memory channel that, that you, you will need it when you configure the DPDK part. So you need, the, you need to know the memory channels that are being, that are being used. You can, uh, some, of, some of the hardware has, uh, uh, has those information in their manuals, or you can actually run a couple of commands and you can get those, uh, those things out. And then, <clears throat> how many NICs you have, ne uh, network interface cards you have? Are they compatible with DPDK? You, do, do you have compatibility? You can actually check. Uh, the DPDK site is, uh, the, the, the uh, link is given there. You can actually go there check um, what is supported, what is not supported. And then the last thing, you have to know where your NICs are located on your motherboard. This is important because the PCIe is actually mapped to the, the NUMA nodes. So you have, if, in, in some cases, um, or in our cases, it was actually um, it was mapped to NUMA node zero. So how do you find it? You can actually use LSPCI and some, do some grab, and then you would see, um, uh, you can actually see the PCI address, and then you can go in sys device, and then PCI address, I guess uh, that's the right path. But anyway, it is somewhere there. And then there, there, there is a file called NUMA. You open it, and you would see the NUMA node affiliation for that particular um, uh, Nick. So, <clears throat> how many of you have done a deployment using Triplo or OpenStack Director? Okay, that's pretty much, yeah. So, do you mind, um, can you teach the others so that we can, I can save some time on this thing, so. <laughs> It would be easier for, yeah, you teach the others. You, you, we are community, right? You teach the next one next to you. Or I have, a, uh, I have some, uh, two slides actually covering just basics of how do you do it. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm actually uh, oversimplifying it, maybe. But let's go through it. So what do you do? You have um, the compute nodes, the controller nodes, you have the servers ready, and then um, one of the servers is going to be converted into a director node. Um, what you have to do on it, uh, you'll install a Red Hat Linux or uh, whatever that you want to, uh, uh, to get the triple up. But I'll, I'll concentrate on RHEL. I'm from Red Hat. They pay me, so uh, <laughs> let me concentrate on RHEL. So we have RHEL, RHEL 7 running. Um, and then you have to get the subscription. Um, so you have to subscribe the server uh, to 
Red Hat portal. Then um, plan. You have to plan your network. You have to plan your storage. It's very necessary. Uh, most of the time, in my experience, it's the network that screws up. And uh, w whenever that gets clicked, the OpenStack installation happens within like an hour. So plan it very well. Get the network. Get, the, get the network VLANs uh, in proper order. So that's very important. Uh, set the host name properly. Once all these, these, all these, things, is, uh, all these things are done, um, install the Diplo client, Python client. Um, you can just run you know, yum install Python Diplo client. It's very easy. Uh, it installs the um, necessary files. There is one more command, uh, one more package that I missed for the images to get, uh, for the uh, overcloud images. Um, but yeah, it's the it's it's again one more yum install. Once you have the triplo client installed on your machine, you have to go in and um, modify or create an undercloud config, which will be basically containing a couple of lines, you know, uh, about which Ethernet card to use for provisioning, what are the IP addresses that you're going to use. Um, uh, what will be the DHCP range that you're going to use? All those things. It's, it's a couple of lines, like 10, 10 lines, I think, max. It will be there. You, you configure that. Once that is done, you run OpenStack under cloud install. And depending on your uh, internet speed and things like that, uh, it gets installed within an hour. So that's the director part. So once the director in is installed, you have to have a um, couple of working folders templates, images in your home, home folder. Um, and then, then comes the fun part. You have to get the uh, network and a couple of files, actually. The, the, the main files that we normally, uh, or in majority of the cases that you will be touching at first is network environment.yaml. You can actually find it in user share, OpenStack, Triple heat templates. Uh, it's already there. You just have to copy it, make a copy of it, Edit it the way you want. Um, specify all the networks that you want, VLANs, all those things. Put it there. Then the other one is configuring the NICs. Uh, I mean, uh, configuring uh, uh, or preparing the, the templates for the uh, the uh, uh, the nodes, the uh, the controller and the compute nodes. So you you you. You have multiple options there. You have uh, multiple um, multiple folders there, example folders there. You just have to take one of them, modify it to your needs. Again, place it in your home directory or your working directory. That's it. Um, once that is done, tag your compute nodes. Uh, introspect the, the nodes, compute, control, Ceph, whatever. Uh, introspect it, tag it. Once tagging is done, you run the uh, OpenStack overcloud deploy uh, command. So we are actually calling the network environment YAML here. So that's about the, um, uh, that's a brief, very brief uh, outline of how, uh, how, how you will be doing OpenStack uh, installer use, install using Triplo or Red Hat OpenStack uh, platform. Now, we have to get into the uh, more interesting thing, which is, which is why I'm here. So that's RTKVM and DPDK. Again, once again, I'm saying um, majority of the stuff, majority of the things that you do actually compl complements each other. So you can, you can avoid RTKVM and have just uh, the plain vanilla uh, uh, kernel and when you have KVM on there, and then you can have DPDK, it will work fine. You add the RTKVM, you can, you can still, uh, it, it, it will be almost complementing each other. You have, uh, you have all the settings almost there. So, I'm, I'm on, I don't want to show you the whole network environment YAML file. It's a very big file uh, sometimes. So uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, taking a couple of lines from it. 
just to show the important things, because it, the session is all about showing you what are the important stuff that you have to actually care for. So <laughs> here, this is, uh, this is actually, these two lines are actually the first boot and the post uh, deployment, uh, post deployment uh, YAML files. So the first one runs after the first boot, and the last one runs after the complete deployment is done. So pretty straightforward, right? That's very easy. <laughs> it's very easy. Believe me, it is very easy. Uh, you have to actually get to, yeah, initially you will be struggling a bit, but yeah, it, it, is, it is going to be easy uh, once you have, uh, once you have get the hang of it. And you're gonna love it. You, you, you're gonna love it more than any GUI that, that is out there. It's, <laughs> the GUIs are very limited. You have only very few things to do within GUI. So I love the command line CLI things. So the amount of customization that you can do is enormous. Anyway, I'm not getting into that. Let's go. Now, the fun things, more fun things, more and more. Um, the parameter defaults. It goes again into the network, network environment.yaml. You can create another YAML and then add it, but for simplicity's sake, I'm adding it here. So parameter defaults. So after several number of configuration things, you have the DPDK configuration added there. Uh, so the first one, um, I don't know if I, if I should walk through every single one of them. But yeah, I'll just quickly do that. Network bridge mappings. I think you guys know it. It's actually mapping the physical interface in um, physical uh, interface in OpenStack to the actual bridges in the OVS. Um, you uh, now the, 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 I'll leave that. The second, the neutron DPDK code list, two and three. This is not just two numbers. This is not just two numbers. It is actually based on the NIC, where the NIC is located in your um, motherboard. In this case, it was located on NUMA node zero. But then you'll, you'll be asking why I didn't use zero and one. So zero is actually, most of the time, you won't be able to tune it. You won't be able to get hold of it. It will be used by something else. So leave that one. One, I, why I didn't use one? What could be the reason? Again, the host process, the, the pro, there are other processes running on the host, right? It needs processing power. So I gave it one to the host processes. Now, whatever left, it is up to me to do whatever with it. So I have um, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll get into that part later. So two and three is actually a pinned core. So it is, it is not used by any of the other, other, other processes in the system. It is pinned. I'll, I'll get into that part uh, in next slide. So two and three is pinned. And it is on NUMA node zero. And NIC, the NIC that we are going to use is on NUMA node zero. So that's why the numbers are there. Now, neutron DPDK memory channels. That's four. The system was having four channels of memory um, uh, to access the memory. So I have put in four there. This is, you, you have to actually find it out the hard way. Sometimes you have to open the, uh, open the hood and check it. Uh, or there are a couple of commands that you can actually run and fi find out DMI tool can, uh, can be used. Um, Anyway, you have to actually find, out, find it out, and it is very necessary to have a good performing DPDK RTK VM system. Now, the fourth one, DPDK socket memory. It is a huge, huge page memory, one GB, a huge page memory. Why I have given that 1,224? It is on NUMA node zero. And that's why that's num that number is there. If it was on NUMA node two, then, oh, NUMA node one, then it is going to be zero comma 1024, or I don't know, yeah, 1024. Um, if, if there were two NICs, one on NUMA node zero and the other one on NUMA node one, 1024 comma 1024. 
Yeah, it's that easy. Now, <laughs> VFI or PCI, that's the driver type. That's the DPDK user space driver that is going to be used by, um, by the system. And the Nova reserved host memory, it speaks on its own, right? It's the reserved memory that will be used by the system. Symbol. The, the host processes use that memory to, uh, to, to run. Now, uh, the CPU, Nova CPU pin set. This is, uh, this is the pin set. Uh, this is actually used by Nova while provisioning. So any, any uh, new instances that are coming up will be having CPU cores from this list. So this actually says you, Nova can use cores from 4 to 12, but not 8. So it's kind of a regex. You, I think you, you must have figure, figured it out. Now, I know it is, it is a bit, <laughs> it's a bit, bit too much, but yeah, that's how it is. <clears throat> Neutron data bus type, this is going to be applied on the OVS switch. It is NetDev. So whatever bridges that are going to be created on the Neutron or OBS is going to be NetDev, NetDev type. And then the next one is the vhost user socket directory. That's where the, that's where the sockets or the, the interfaces for the VMs are going to be created. That's, that's where the runtime, um, uh, runtime um, the, the, where the OBS uses uh, uh, or runtime folder that OVS uses. Now, the third one, Nova scheduler filter. The important one, oh, sorry, the important one is actually here. Numa topology filter, you can see it, right? Numa topology filter. So that actually, so it actually gives um, uh, Nova scheduler some more things to play with. So it actually, um, so Nova scheduler can actually schedule, schedule or filter nodes based on uh, the capability, uh, NUMA capability of the uh, system. And the last one, compute kernel arguments. This line is exactly as it is going to be replaced in each compute node. The grub, the grub line, you know the grub line where the, comp where the kernel parameters are set up. That is going to be th that line is going to be placed in all the compute nodes. So, what does it say? It says the the huge page memory is one GB. The default one is one GB. The huge pages are one one GB. It has twenty four huge pages. The power state is disabled. Uh, the, the the pinned cores are from two to thirteen. We we are pinning cores from two to thirteen. So. Uh, the IO MMU is on. Um, yeah, that's pre pretty much it. Um, I don't know if there is anything I'm missing there. Yeah, that's it. So this line is going to be replaced in each compute node for the kernel parameter. So yeah, watch out for this. Yeah, you can you can do whatever you want to do with it, and then it is going to be go going into the grub config. <clears throat> Moving on. Ah, more files. <laughs> it's really tough, man. So uh, compute uh, first boot dot YAML. Again, this is the first boot uh, YAML file. I'm not showing everything in it. I'm just showing a, a shell script. Shall I go through every each and every line? It would be fun. Right? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. What it does is it basically sets the, um, it basically edits the systemctl service file and adds a couple of parameters into it. So, up P. So, the one that is interesting is here runtime directory mode. That is going to be 0775. And then you have group QMO and then umask 0002. What does it say? So the, the runtime directory will be having uh, 
whatever files that are going to be created in the uh, runtime directory is going to have uh, uh, group uh, QMO, and the mask will be 002, and the directory mode will be 0075. So I guess you guys know about those things. Uh, I don't have to explain it, <laughs> right? OK. That's about it. And then uh, this is continuation of it. Again, this, it, it is almost the same thing. I don't, I don't want to go through everything. It does the similar thing, but on to, ah, it keeps on, I keep on doing it. It, it actually edits this file, obsctl file, which is actually responsible for creating the bridges and the database updates and all those things. So it, it, that's a script, and then within that script, it actually replaces the, uh, it actually places the UMAS there. So that's what it does. And then uh, I'll skip on to the uh, 49th line, which actually says, which is what I was referring to, the kernel arguments that, uh, that will be replaced, right? So that is, that, that's what, uh, that's what, uh, what happens there. <coughs> now, <sighs> my gosh, I need some water. Now, <laughs> thank you, man. Uh, so that's the grub line, and then we have the, um, uh, yeah, due to some issues, I think there is some bug. Uh, I'm not sure if it is uh, resolved or not. So uh, we have SE Linux uh, in, set to permissive. That uh, uh, we had to do that because of some bugs or something, and then that's that's pretty much it. And then uh, rest of the things is like uh, is is actually part of the uh, YAML file or the heat template that gets uh, uh, pushed onto the um, shell script. <clears throat> More. This is compute post install. This is this happens after the deployment is done. After everything is done, uh, this is going to this is this particular file is going to be running. So again, I'm not showing everything. This is part of it. Uh, this is the shell script that uh, that that is embedded within it. Um, you can go ahead do whatever you want to do with it. That's the shell script. Okay, what it does. It actually calculates the CPU mask and applies to OVS. Yeah, where is it? OVS. That's it. So it applies these core masks to open vSwitch configuration. Somehow the deployment doesn't doesn't do that. So we have to do we have to do it manually. Um, that's that's what not manually actually uh, you write a script and then script does it, so that goes there, and then it restarts the open v switch, and so on and so forth. And then uh, yeah, the the one that uh, that isn't that could be interesting to you is the kernel RTKVM. Uh, it is actually coming from a a special repo in Red Hat. Uh, there, there is a repo uh, rel, I think, uh, yeah. Rel seven server NFE RPMs. I think it's just it's a it's just a collection of RPMs. You could possibly find it somewhere else also. It's RT KVM, RT kernel, um, some uh, tuned profiles. So you could use that. You could use those and make your own uh, repo and connect to it. Again, uh, connecting to the repo, you can actually use the um, the shell script to do the magic that you want. Here, it is actually the rel registration YAML. Uh, it actually automatically registers the uh, the compute nodes and the controller nodes to the uh, Red Hat portal. So that's what that's what this this thing does. This particular YAML um, config does. This is, I think, this is the last file that need to be edited. Yes. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Okay, this this is actually Nick config compute dot yaml. Again, it's part of it. Um, what it what what you what you are seeing is Nick one. I'm I'll I'll go bottom up. So Nick one, which 
whatever the first snake on the uh, node will be converted into a DPDK interface. Uh, it, it, all these things are done automatically while deploying. So NIC1 is converted to DPDK, and it will be DPDK0, and then it will be added to the BR link 0 bridge. So straightforward, right? 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 <laughs> Come on. I know you guys might be sleeping. <laughs> too, too many configuration files, and then, uh, yeah, this guy is going crazy with files. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's kind of uh, summarizes everything, so everything, all the configuration that we have done. Uh, those are the main areas that you have to concentrate on. I have actually put all these files, the original files, on a GitHub. I'll give you the links. You can actually go in and check what is happening there. What is the time, actually? Okay, I have 10 minutes, right? <clears throat> so OpenStack deploy. Again, the, uh, you have seen this de deploy command before. Uh, during the um, slides where I explained how the director-based installation goes on, right? So this is an extension to it. Here we are actually adding a couple of more uh, environment files to it. Um, you have the network isolation, which is required, if, if, which is sometimes required. Most of the time it is required to segregate traffic, segregate uh, networks. Um, I'll not get into that. Uh, rel registration it is straightforward. Uh, then the network environment uh, .yaml, which we created very uh, lately. And then the next two lines, which actually says that there will be a one control node, and there will be five compute nodes, or whatever you want. You, if you want one node, one compute node, just replace it with one, and then it will take care of the deployment. Now, after 40 minutes, that's kind of a norm in, uh, in a heat, in a OpenStack deployment using Red Hat Linux or Triplo, probably. Um, that's for, it takes 40 minutes to do, get a OpenStack running. I think uh, it is whatever the size of the, uh, uh, of the uh, deployment, it roughly takes that much amount. The problems that could be happening is with the networks, but yeah. So, so far in my experience, it gets deployed within 40, 40 to 45 minutes. You get OpenStack running if there is no problem with the network. Again, OpenStack works good. OpenStack is best. And then the, the pro, come on guys. <laughs> so, OpenStack works. The, most of the time, in my experience, it is the network that makes the problem. Right? <laughs> See? He knows it. Joachim knows it. <clears throat> OK. We have, so this is, these are uh, post-deployment tasks. Um, here, we are actually creating flavor. Uh, that will be that we will be using for deploying um, or instantiating instances of uh, VMs. Uh, what we do, uh, the first line is pretty straightforward. You're actually creating a, a flavor. The next line, the three, li the third line, which is goes to I don't know how many lines are there, but yes, it pretty much uh, that the, the 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 configurations that you are seeing there actually says that this flavor is, a, uh, is to be used for um, real-time and DPDK or real-time uh, purpose. Or if you want something to have, yeah? Uh, you don't. You, it is not necessary, so like, uh, not everything is necessary, but you can have it. 
I, I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just putting it there so that you can actually have a feeling of what are the things that you can actually do. Here it is actually. This flavor is actually going to use one NUMA node, NUMA node one, and then it will be having a memory policy which is preferred, which means that it it uh, it uh, it is preferred to use the memory from NUMA node one uh, or the, the the one NUMA node that is assigned to it. It should be assigning. Uh, memory from that thing, and then the CPUs that the, the cores that need to be used are four, five, six, seven, and then uh, the memory need to be from that uh, NUMA node, and it should be 4096, which is 4 GB, and then it has real time. It actually sets some more parameters into the into the lib world, so that actually gives a bit more uh, details into the uh, lib world. I'm not getting into that, those things. It, it, it takes a lot of time to explain those things. Uh, and I'm running out of time. I'm, I have five minutes left. So yeah, yeah. So that's it, 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 the, the whole thing is not necessary. You can pick and choose whatever, whatever you want. But um, <clears throat> some, of the, some of the things which will set a couple of things within LibWord, which which will be uh, useful for you, uh, which will be useful for our uh, deployment. Now, <clears throat> host segregate, again, uh, the, here we are actually segregating um, uh, nodes with, uh, uh, nodes with uh, uh, the CPU pinned, so, so that we have some zones created uh, or host aggregates created. So that's what it does. Uh, the, the lines actually uh, explains all these things. The, first, the second line actually uh, creates a, a, a host aggregate called pin, pinned host. The second one actually adds a meta, metadata to that uh, pinned host, uh, pinned equals true, and then um, adds the compute host to the aggregate. Straightforward, very simple. Um, again, you are, we are actually creating some external network here. Um, the one thing that we have done during the testing phase is we have actually disabled the port security. It was actually creating some issues with our testing phase, and uh, you know it was dropping packets. I think it was because of some spoofing. Uh, it was it was trying to prevent some spoofing attack or something like that. So we disabled those uh, port security, which basically disables all the IP table stuff, meddling in between. And the, yeah, the first one is the network, and the second one is the subnet. Uh, the, uh, don't look at the IP address. It, anyway, it is not going to be applied onto the uh, machines or the instances. <clears throat> Now, upload image and run the instance. Everyone does that, right? I think, uh, yeah, OpenStack guys. You does, you don't, <laughs> you, you upload the image, you run the image. The only thing, the difference is, uh, it's not difference actually, you're actually using the uh, flavor that we have created earlier. We'll use that thing here. Um, the M1 medium huge thing. And yeah, and then it uses the DPDK um, NIC that we have created earlier. So that's about creating and running the instance. Now I'll I'll I'll, I'll try to make it quick because I'm running out of time. Um, measurement results. Actually, uh, today morning, uh, Mr. Tapio uh, has done a wonderful presentation. It actually details about what are the tools that we have used, uh, or he has used, and how you can actually use them to do the testing, how, how you can actually leverage on the open source. It, it is all about open source tools. It's not about the proprietary tools. I'm not against proprietary tools. They do well, but sometimes we don't have any choice. We have to use open, open source tools. and. Open source tools are not behind. They do good job. Uh, you can actually refer to the uh, slide. You can refer to the slide, um, not the slide, session there. Again, 
it's a um, good sight. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's actually referring to the session that happened today morning. Um, so I'm, uh, I have to confess uh, something here. Um, in, in this test, actually, RT, RT, uh, having RT didn't, giving, uh, didn't give any um, particular advantage here. Because the thing is, the, the, the VM that we are running and the application on top of it was not using RT. It was test PMD that, were, that we were using. So, so it was, uh, yeah, we, we ran the test. We ran the test, but the test was basically um, about how the DPDK is performing. So uh, we did a couple of tests. Actually, you can see that RT, with the RT, we had a couple of performance drop in, uh, in the round trip time uh, in moving data from what, the package in uh, through the VM, through the OVS, through the VM, back to uh, the traffic gen. So it was actually, uh, uh, with RT, it was actually taking a bit more time. It could be because how the RT is be behaving, because the RT always give more priority to the prioritized task, and it might keep away whatever that is happening there. So there is a difference. I'm not sure what, why it happened. If anyone knows about it, please, uh, you're welcome. You can explain to us. No, G GPIO. IGBIO. Oh, no, it was. Uh, I think that that's the the driver, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. We we could test that. We could test that. Yeah, it got worse when, when, when you had RT on it. But then we are not doing, um, we, we don't have an RT application on it. The, uh, it was test, test PMD. It was not using any RT stuff. It, it was, yeah. yeah, probably, yeah. I don't have mic. Yeah, actually, uh, I have, uh, I have my contacts in the uh, beginning of this slide. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the back. You can, uh, you can, if you have any concerns, if you have any, anything that you have to know, you can always get back to me. If I don't know, I have all my colleagues here in Red Hat and outside who can, uh, who can always help me or help us in getting uh, what we are trying to achieve. So we are a community. We have to do that. So without DPDK, you can see that. Without DPDK, we have an 80 microsecond, more than 80 microseconds. I think it, w it went to some 200 microseconds or something. And then the packet loss, uh, the, pack, the throughput was like 0.2 Mbps, which is horrible. <sighs> so to sum it all, uh, you have to know your hardware well. You have to know your CPU, how much core count you have, memory channels, where the NICs are. You have to set up your BIOS pro properly. You have to uh, install the director or the undercloud. Plan your environment carefully. Build your um, environment files. Run the deployment script all the, with, the all, with all the environment files. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the rest of the stuff is uh, plain OpenStack stuff. You, you have it there. And then the last one is actually the, the, the actual files, the source files that we have uh, used for uh, testing. You can always refer to it is GitHub link. Uh, you can always go there, check it out, play with it. If you have any comments, drop, it, drop a comment there. I'll, 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 uh, I'll definitely check it. If I, if I can solve it, if I can give you any help on it, I'll, I'll definitely do that. <clears throat> These are the references. Um, 
a hell lot of references are there. More references we can add. Um, yeah, the, basically the, 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 these are the stuff that we have used. And thanks to all the guys that, uh, that, help, that helped us. Um, it was Nokia and Red Hat. It was a joint effort. So yeah, so th those are the guys that, uh, that helped, me, helped us to get, uh, to get this thing running, automated, all those things. And thank you.